first day, I just went to say hello to Scott Witt and he gave me a big hug and said, welcome home. That's what it feels like. It feels like coming home. And then we did a big group warm up with everyone and there's a whole bunch of people I've never met before or work with and instantly you create a connection and everyone is willing to share and willing to play and willing to fail. <laughs> um, so you feel entirely supported. There's something about the spirit of the family here and that people are not here to prove anything to one another, but to really share their ideas and collaborate, whether they're students or teachers. The big one I'm pretty sure a lot of people hear about is the family, friends. My name is Bethan Clark, and I'm from London in the United Kingdom. Roberto Martinez Loyo from Mexico City. I'm a stunt performer, a stuntman back in Mexico, and I'm also a historical European martial arts instructor. I'm Nick Hodson, and I'm a FTC fight instructor from Kitchener-Waterloo, Ontario. My name is Elena Randall. I am currently based in Calgary. I'm Spencer Hum. I'm a stage combat instructor. Um, I'm a, an actor and a comedian and a performer and fight director. Uh, my name is Kevin K. Mack. I am a Chinese martial artist, also a stuntman, uh, but at home I am a cook. My name is Samantha Egley and I'm from Denver, Colorado where I currently am a house manager, fight director, and becoming a Pilates teacher. I am also a stage manager, a playwright, uh, done some literary management, all of those things. So. I'm Jeffrey Alm. I am from Seattle, Washington. I was born and bred there. I am a um, certified teacher, certified fight director, and now a fight master with the SAFD. I've been at the Patty since the 08, 09. My first Patty was 98. And that was pretty amazing as an experience. This is my first time with the Patty Crane. And um, I came to my first Banff workshop, I think, 12 years ago. My first Patty was 2003. And I just realized that it's something that I needed to do this year. I was lucky enough to be there to see Patty come down for the first time and to meet Patty and to go up and, and actually have a nice relationship with Patty. Um, and uh, I have missed a couple that were in faraway lands, but uh, I've been here for all of the ones here in Canada, and I wouldn't miss one. But they're wonderful events. I had just gotten into stage combat when '98, so when I showed up, uh, it was it was mind blowing because there were so many amazing people here now, which are still here, which makes me super thrilled. It's fantastic. It's you know inspiring and kind of mind altering and expanding. Um, there is never a class where you don't learn something, where you don't question something. Um, whether that's about your own practice or how you work as a student, or it, and just the range of people you encounter is, is unlike anything I've experienced before. Oh, it was brilliant just seeing so many people put together so much work from whether it's movement-based or Pepe and, and Scotty were doing clowning stuff. Uh, there was like great sword work, panning up and talk. It was just, it was amazing. That hooked me, right? That was the magical moment of like, I, I want to do this for a long time. Through the 70s and 80s, stage combat was an emerging idea, right? And we were at least rediscovering it. Um, and it was all about controlling the chaos. It was all about creating order and creating safety. And that was really the battle cry. And I think <clears throat> a lot of control and a lot of structure was put in place. And then when the IOSP came in and started to bring people from different organizations that really were all doing the same thing, creating order and structure and safety and reliability and predictability, we started to say, hey, let's get together and let's start to work outside of that box. Let's create a little unpredictability. Let's create a little, let's look into places we hadn't looked before. Let's think of doing things in a counterintuitive way. And when we talk about the spirit of Patty Crane, um, he was an open-minded he was a bit of a cowboy. He told me about a um, a fight that with a with a trident and a net. <clears throat> and I know Patty's fencing master didn't teach him how to work with trident and net, so he had to invent it. And he was uh, just passionate about <clears throat> that fight. He would tell you, he would just beam while he would, uh, would tell you about it. And um, he was so proud of what he had done. And, and I know that they had created whatever that was. They created that technique, and he had the audacity to create. My first patty, I got a chance to meet people like Brad Waller, and his approach to Marazzo was mind-boggling. And it, it was so refreshing. It was such a great approach to the historical aspect behind stage combat. 
that at first I decided, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start doing stage combat with historical bases and just start you know, researching and just getting a feel for the historical side to apply that to stage combat. After my second patty, I got to know John Lennox, who invited me to ISMAC, International Swordplay and Martial Arts Convention. So I got a chance to go down there. I uh, spent about a week afterwards at his place just working on historical stuff. And I was set. This is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be doing stage combat with a historical basis. And somewhere down the line, again, at Patty, I met Scott Brown. And he was strictly HEMA. He was strictly doing historical European martial arts with a competitive vision. So it wasn't, we're learning this to do stage combat. So once again, I went back home and it was, okay, yes, we'll start training for stage combat, but we'll also do tournaments and we'll also go to HEMA events. I didn't realize how expansive like the world was and how many people were doing so many different things. Ah, the variety. First of all, it starts with the passion of the people who teach you, right? Because if they're passionate, you cannot help but be drawn into it. And they're teaching you the things that they love about what they do, right? Um, I, I, I can't, I'm trying to think of the classes and they all, they all have like, they all have kind of done something different to me. Uh, today, for example, um, I managed to take a class with Pepe and he has been someone that uh, my master teacher, Rachel Ban Williams, has said, you must go, go work, find, you know, work with Pepe, work with Pepe. And I finally got to do it and I entirely see why. So that was a very joyful moment for me this morning. Um, I'm trying to think, just now watching um, uh, mocap, it's not something I've done before, so that was also kind of mind expanding and fascinating. Just, there's something in every session that is beautiful. I was originally an actor um, and I found stage combat uh, kind of careering out of drama school, you know, and you're like, you have to have loads of skills. Uh, so I started off going, this will be a great skill, and then realised it made me a better actor. <laughs> it, it makes you be in the moment, it makes you connect with your partner, uh, and it's exploring something physical and a human extreme of expression. So that's how I came to stage combat, and then I decided that I would like to train to be a teacher with a view to being a fight director. So I became an apprentice to uh, Rachel, who is one of the co-founders of RCANI, along with Ruth Cooper-Brown, um, and trained to be a teacher with the British Academy of Dramatic Combat. So I've just finished that kind of three-year programme. Um, so I found out about the paddy from Ruth and Rachel because they've been invited. Um, and they were like, you have to do this thing. It's great. It's changed their lives. So it will change mine. I'm an American and I've been with the SAFD for a long time and then I decided to branch out and try to explore some other training and went to Fight Directors Canada <laughs> FTC's national workshop in 2014 where I met all of these wonderful Canadians who told me about this magical workshop that happened in Banff. Because I knew that there was sort of a historical bent and um, I knew Pops, I knew Brad, so I decided to come and just find out for myself, which is I'm really glad I did. You know, it's just. The energy was so nice. Well, I've been to a lot of regional workshops in America. I've been to the American National and the Canadian National and Worlds. Um, so I have a wide variety and it's pretty unique. There are things that it has similar in structure to some of the American regional workshops. Like it is a bit of a tasting platter for classes and whatnot. But there's something about the spirit of the family here and that people are not here to prove anything to one another, but to really share their ideas and collaborate, whether they're students or teachers. You know, they're really open, and that's an exceptional place to start conversations. And it's not about your ranks, it's not about your titles, it's not about getting a piece of paper, which is exceptionally refreshing uh, way to study combat. I love the idea that people share their skills here, they encourage everybody. I've never been a huge physical person. As a kid, I wasn't allowed to do a lot of physical things because my guardians wanted to protect me from being hurt. And so, um, um, so I've always been a little terrified as to whether I will be able to endure. I think I'm one of the few who are, is not doing this professionally. And I'm thankful to be allowed into the group. And I know there's lots of people that feel like, oh, am I qualified for it? Can I go? Is it like a bunch of advanced fighters who've been doing it for 35 years or whatever? Um, yeah, when I showed up, I had done like 
year, maybe, of, of, of broad sort of that was it. <laughs> and you, you step into it and you figure out stuff and there's people who you say, can I have some help? And people show you what they know and you learn so much. So. Everyone at every level is welcome and can take something away from these classes. And that's, it's not about pandering and like, oh, you've never touched a sword before. We can't, we can't do that. You, you know, you have to sit out. No, we're going to work to you and you're going to learn from us and we're going to learn from you. And it's just an exceptional reciprocal process that it's been fantastic to be a part of. I love the patty because I came here, zero background as far as I thought. I thought I was the very bottom of the totem pole, Chinese martial artist. These guys are all t touching rapiers and uh, daggers and cutlasses and I'm in over my head. Um, two days in, that went away. There's no totem pole. Actually made me a better martial artist for that, better teacher for that, learning all these things for sharing. And now I don't even say I'm like, I'm a coach, but I'm not teaching stuff. We're playing, we're sharing. I actually use that back home now with all these ideas and going back home with them. So I love Patty a lot. So much opportunity to listen and to absorb and to make relationships. And then it's taken me over to England to international workshops that you know weren't patty workshops, but had some of the same players. And then uh, because of my work teaching at the Patty Crane Workshop, David Boucher was familiar enough with my teaching to recommend me as a teacher for the Society of American Fight Directors. So career-wise, that was big for me. And he was very generous to do that. I would not be a, a stunt guy had it not been for Dave Boucher. Had it not been for Dave Boucher, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have met Danny. I wouldn't if it hadn't been for Danny, I wouldn't have come to my first patty. I wouldn't have gotten into fencing, and I would not be a HEMA instructor and competing in all these wonderful tournaments. I love that the instructors encourage you, but they're also willing to let you step back and observe. And um, um, and there's such a variety of um, levels and exploration. I think it's that constant practice, which is something that you get from everyone here at Paddy. That you know, you stand in the class with a teacher who's just been teaching you, and then we stood next to you as a student or working with you as a student. Um, the constant learning is encouraged, um, and it's nice to be in that environment. I get to teach all the time, and it's a real joy. But to get to be a student, those opportunities you have to kind of look for. I like it. For me. One of the things that got me into this was doing it. You know, that was my first training. And I find that I learned so much more by taking from other teachers. And um, it's I amazing. Mean, it's, you come here and you think, I don't know anything. And I love that feeling, mostly. Um, but then, again, just to uh, experience different people's ideas. Um, especially around sort of the historical stuff, you know, because for me, I came at this as an actor. I mean, I've never been a martial artist. I've dabbled in a few, but nothing, you know, nothing disciplined that way. And so coming and working with the Martinez's and um, working with uh, JP and almost everybody here, it's all been about precision and things that I just find very interesting and challenging. It was just about small adjustments. You know, because a lot of us have a lot of training and he and I were working on this one technique that Ruth gave us and it was, you're just slowly finding the incremental differences between things. Um, and it was nice to be able to be at a level with people where we could just adjust that. Or even like with the Martinez's, you know, they come from a martial background and in a lot of times it's like, all right, advance. I'm like, no, turn your foot just this much. And I'm at a point in my career where that is the things that I need as someone to look in such detail at my work that I can really continue improving because otherwise I'll feel like I hit a plateau. It's like, oh, I know the techniques, I know the terms, but to really keep growing and have these people continue to push me in specific ways has been really great. I think one of the things that I thought was most significant about the patty was that early, early in the, in the Banff days, after we had <clears throat> reached across the ocean and pulled some people over from there and reached up to North America, or maybe we reached up and they pulled us up here, right? And we were all here in Banff. We also invited reenactors. And there was a little bit, people looked a little bit down their noses, some folks, at the reenactors. What are they here for? And they were here, and there was an exchange. And I don't remember the first time they were here so much except the grumblings amongst the artists who maybe thought, what are they doing here? I don't understand. Um, and then we stuck to our guns. And the next time we had another mix of historical martial artists, really. But from our perspective, they were reenactors, right? 
because they were out there with equipment hitting each other. And I remember sitting in an audience with a fight director who maybe had 30 or 40 years of experience. And I just remember sitting next to someone I respected immensely. And Paul McDonald, and I, I think it may have been Jared Kirby, were doing a duel with basket-hilted, you know, wooden uh, broadswords. And they had all the equipment on. And they were circling each other. And then there was this, ta -ta, and they did an exchange. And there was a gasp in the audience. A gasp of... <gasps> And I, and I just, I felt like everyone around me who were so experienced in doing, they were gasping at the fact that they finally were seeing it for real. They, because there was technique that they could clearly see, and there was real intention and real structure and technique that had been practiced and, and honed was all there, and they could see it. For the first time, they were like, that's what real looks like. Because I don't think they had seen anything like that before, most of us. Uh, and I, for me, that's, that was the seminal Patty moment of the real breaking open. And I think after that dam broke, many others broke, many other boundaries broke because people started to say, oh, it's great to do things maybe in a little bit of a different way. To have people who come from different walks of life, different perspectives, different angles on the combat. Today, I actually worked with John Lennox for the first time. Him being so knowledgeable in martial arts and being able to adapt other martial arts, being able to talk to him about that, finding out knowledge I didn't know that he had and being able to talk on the same level as him. You can see how connected they are and how much they respect each other and how much they have fun. And so it's awesome to see that. I think a lot of the spirit of Patty Crane that we talk about is that inclusion and acceptance and openness and creativity outside of structures. Of course, we all meet here under the auspices of safety. At the same time, we tend to explore a bit more. It's the learning and the sharing that is really valuable. And it's an opportunity to work with people that you know I can, I can never visit independently. So, um, yeah, I'm a little bit emotional about it actually, because <laughs> it is such a wonderful place, um, and Banff is a beautiful place. So, those two things combined make it a very lovely spiritual experience. This is home. I come here, and this is my home in the mountains, my home in the snow. We don't get a lot of that in Mexico. I think. What the paddy does is bring together practitioners from all over the world, and it's not about um, it's not about a certification. So you are coming here, and people are bringing new ideas that they're playing with, or ideas they've been playing with for years and still exploring to play and to share. And I think that is what is particularly unique about the paddy. It was fight. It was dance, but I'd never seen fight in that sense. But it really provided me a place because I did teach at a bunch of universities for a while, but then this really became a place where I could even do more and, and different. And it's neat to see how it's evolved and then, like I've seen people change in their teaching styles, right, over the 20 years that I've been coming to it, where they've adopted and shared, like worked with each other. And the fact that you are so welcomed and everyone is so open both in class and outside, you know, there is no, there is no sort of teacher-student, there is, there is a group of people and we are sharing and learning from each other. Um, and I think that generosity and humility um, really does set the paddy apart. Um, and I hope that it filters down. Um, I feel like it does, because I think everyone that comes here and experiences it takes away that heart, I hope and then that goes back to where we all go for two years. <laughs> so it's kind of like a big world paddy hug. <laughs> One of the things that you practice here, whether you realize it or not, is good comradeship, good partnering. You see it at the top level, your teachers that are you know, exhibiting that behavior with each other. And then that's something that I want to be able to share with my students in the sense of, so that they know that this isn't a competition, this isn't a class system, it's about, you know, it's about what theater is about, you know, connecting with each other and collaborating with each other, you know, and it has, it's a great way to practice those skills. And everybody here seems to have that attitude, so it's a very nice place to be energetically. It's a place where I can come and get steeped in creativity for a few days 
where thoughts become clearer, where my plans for my career suddenly crystallize in my head and I get an enthusiasm for them and I go, oh, I know exactly what I want to do and I know how I want to do it and I know who I want to get involved with it. And, and that's been also a big thing. Collaboration, the, the way we come together here um, in cooperation. There's really not competition here. Spending New Year's with your family. The same thing that would happen if you spend it at home. You've got the weird uncle, you've got the hot cousin, you've got the funny kids, or uh, mom and dad really bringing the family together. And that's what this is. You can step out of the, out of the elevator and there's people swinging swords. And it's not this uh, bashing with the swords and, oh, careful, I'm cross. No, it's, okay, I saw this in this treatise. And I want to really understand. So it's people crossing swords trying to better understand what the old masters wrote and drew in those books. Or walk into a room and see people flying all over the place working on choreographies. Or it's stepping out into the snow and Daniel Ford Beavis is set on fire. Or it's walking into the Martha Greenham Theater and seeing people getting hit with bottles and just showcasing all their beautiful, wonderful talents. At dinner, at lunch, chatting, being friends, seeing people, the first hugs. In a lot of situations in dining halls, you go, you have dinner, and then you leave right away. But at almost every meal, even if I'd had things I was going off to do, or someone else said they had to go off and do, people stay until the last possible minute to continue just having conversations. And I've made such a conscious effort to sit with different people at every meal and to really just get to know everyone. And it's really about that. We're not talking about superficial things and we're not worried about the rest of the world right now, but we're just together with each other and that presence and that generosity of spirit has been so exceptional. No matter what your background is, right, whether you're a movement specialist or a dancer, stunt person, stage combat artist, an actor, a director, anything, you can find something here that will expand your your view and your understanding of, of, of theater, art, and film, and all those things. I think something that is important about the Patty Crane Workshop is the idea of legacy, especially this year when we're talking about in the footsteps of giants, and that we're a part of something. It's like we are a part of something that is growing and continuing and has a future and has a past and that appreciation and understanding can only help us get better at this because it's an art about collaboration and about being a part of something bigger than yourself and if you stop feeling that and you stop realizing that you are then I think it gets much more difficult to make the art we want to make so I think it's been great to become a part of this family. I think of all the instructors and leaders and the stories they tell about their journey is a lift up the way they help you with your craft is a lift up. The way we interact with each other in our classes is a lift up. So either it's a physical lift up from the ground or it's an emotional lift up. It's a lift up in terms of look ahead, look upward, look forward, um, whatever your career, whatever your journey, wherever you are in, um, in this work, I think lifting up is what I would use to describe it. You will be welcomed, whoever you are and whatever your background. Um, you are welcome here. Uh, and just do it. Life's too short. Just, just, just make it work, make it happen, come. Because uh, there is no other experience like it. <laughs>